Hello everyone, so this is going to be a series of little short Unity tidbits on kind of how to do basic or intermediate things in Unity, and uh, we'll take requests and stuff and probably do some more advanced um, things as well in Unity. Some of these are going to require um, doing a little bit of code, um, and some of them aren't. This tutorial is going to be um, about just how to practically use LOD groups in Unity. Basically, um, how do I use LODs in Unity? Um, I'd really like to do this series of tutorials on like a lot of the things that I had to Google um, kind of over and over again. How to get one object to follow another object. Um, how to make a rigid body rocket launcher or things like that. So in this tutorial here we're going to focus on how to bring in our LOD models and how to um, use LOD groups in our game. So I put in the video description a download link for a Unity package file and it should bring in this folder structure here with a uh, reflection cube map, um, material for the uh, hot rod, and the material for the tires. Um, of course, all of the LOD models, 0, 1, and 2 and then this special car paint shader which is kind of cool on the material it gives you the ability to tweak the rim uh, reflectivity the color the main color of the car um, and it also masks out the color on the car here using the alpha texture of this you can color the car um, different colors and uh, that's what the blend amount is there um, and then of course the textures for the car the tire texture and the uh, that. So that all comes in through the Unity package file in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and take our models that we have and we did proper naming conventions here by basically exporting these out as FBX and saying this is the LOD 0, this is the LOD 1, this is the LOD 2. Um, LOD stands for level of detail. So your level of detail 0 would be your lowest LOD and that would be your highest resolution model. Um, the first person character, first person car, the garage vehicle, and then LOD 1 is a little less resolution, LOD 2 is even less. Um, if I go in here we can, I believe, if we look at the chassis here, and this is just indicative of it, we don't need to look at all the parts um, together, but just like the chassis for each, you'll see that this is 1638 tries and the chassis on the LOD um, 1 is 800 and some tries and then the chassis on the LED 2 is 400 and some tries and then the bottom is actually removed on this one and this one um, and I think we have the bottom on this one because it's the first it's the closest vehicle to the camera and these other two vehicles would be way off in the distance and you would never know that they didn't have a bottom because the camera is nowhere near them um, it's just an optimization technique to um, save on polys. Um, the other thing we want to do is select all of them and we can turn off generate colliders because this is our artwork and apply and we'd want to make our own collision optimized. We can turn off that they have a rig because they don't, we don't need it and we don't need, want animation so that when you bring them into the scene they don't have some kind of funky animator component on them. These are just the models, they're not the collision. So we can shift select all of them and left mouse drag them into the scene. Okay, so there we have it. And what I'm going to do here is just take the LOD 1 and 2 and we'll kind of just um, drag them out so we can take a look at each one really quick. And uh, so this is our highest resolution um, model right here. These are mobile phone assets, so they're really low poly as it is. This thing's like 1400 triangles or something, so they're designed for a mobile phone. These are not PC um, resolution assets, okay? I think when I did these, uh, this was for a mobile phone um, car racing project. And um, of course they have the chassis separated out, which you should do on your car models, and then of course all the wheels separated out properly as such so that you can go in there and use code to basically do all of your rotations and things like this when you want the wheels to spin like this. Um, so don't have all of that stuff attached. So to create the LOD group what we want to do is select all of these and zero them out so that they're all right on top of each other like they were when I dragged them in. Let's go game object create empty 
and we'll do reset so that it zeroes out all of the transform information for it. It is at the world origin and we will call this classic um, street rod and that's going to be our in-game car with all of the LODs underneath of it. So we'll shift select all of them, left mouse drag them into this group so now they all exist underneath this one parent and they are all children okay and we can actually even shift them so that it's LOD 0, 1, and 2 in order excellent so now we need to set up the LOD group because we have these meshes um, overlapping each other and in game like this they would flicker and you'd see weird behaviors so one of the next things we can do here is create a prefab out of it and one of the easiest ways um, to do this is to left mouse drag it into your project window and now I can delete it from the scene and this prefabricated object can be used within or instantiated into any scene okay prefab now so with this um, root object selected without worrying about anything under it let's go to add component here and let's go to LOD group boom there it is so the LOD group has been assigned uh, by default, the values are not working correctly. You can see that we have to get really close for the highest detail uh, LOD. And that's mainly because we don't have anything in our LOD groups just yet. So I'm going to move the game window out of the way. And we're going to have our LOD group 0 here um, selected. You'll see the blue around it. And we're just going to go in and drag the matching LOD 0 group onto it. Okay? And there it is. It brings in every one of the mesh renderers underneath of it. All the wheels, all the things, basically all the game objects that have a mesh renderer that need to be swapped for an LOD are called out. So we're going to go and click on LOD 1 and just wash, rinse, repeat the same behavior for all of our LODs. So now they are all assigned. LOD 0, LOD 1, LOD 2. So the percentages are at 100% um, distance, that basically that default distance your camera is going to be set in your game, um, we're going to stay at the LOD 0. About 60% of the distance away, we're going to swap to LOD 1, which it did. And about 30% away, we're going to swap to LOD 2, which it did. You can see this. If you have the root object selected, it will print and show you in a debug here which LOD we're at. If you don't have it selected, um, you won't see it. The LOD act action will work. It is swapping. You'll notice that after we go so far out, the car actually disappears. Okay, but if you want to see the debug, you'll see it called. And called means removed from the scene or just basically it's not visible anymore. Now, depending on how far you want these uh, vehicles to swap out to the next LOD, like I don't like this distance because I can actually see the geometry kind of changing at this distance. It's a little bit of too of a visible change. Really, the idea is, is to tweak your LODs to where that change is not that visible and I'm feeling about this distance right here would be the proper um, distance for LOD um, 2. So what we want to do is just we'll move that down there and we'll move this out to about I'd say let's say at about 15 percent we swap to LOD 2. Oh, I think I, think I uh, that's good. So there we are, LOD 0, highest LOD. We swap to LOD 1 there. And now I don't see the LOD T swap. That's great. I don't even see that pop happening at all. I don't even, I barely see a transition to LOD 1. We actually need to move that LOD 1 transition out a little bit too, because I'm noticing that some parts of my car are <laughs> disappearing. It's just a few pixels, but I can see it. So I want to say that maybe about this far out, is where we'd want it maybe somewhere near there 22 percent possibly let's go with like 30 yeah I'm happy with that I'm happy with that and then called out now it depends on how particular you are in your game you would see that probably disappear okay right there you would see that kind of pop and what this would represent is, is if you're in a car racing game 
um, and all the AI, you'd use your LOD groups on your AI because basically your player car, you really wouldn't use LOD groups on because it's going to be a fixed distance from the camera. But all of your AI vehicles, if you had like 30 AI or 20, you would want to have LOD groups on them so that when they get out to the horizon like this, it's using your 400 triangle mesh and not your 2000 triangle mesh. I feel pretty good about the, the geometry swaps. Like, I don't see any really huge pops. It is smoothly um, transitioning between the LODs. We can even bring this a little more forward. And uh, the idea is, is at this distance, right, we swap to that lower LOD and so that the, the CPU is processing less vertices, you know, the GPU, CPU, whatever. This overall, the system is processing less amounts of geometry. Okay, one thing I'd really like here is that we didn't have an LOD3 done by our modeler, and I feel like when it gets out to this distance, I really don't want it just to be called. And it's saying at about 2% out to call and disappear, even if we set that to 1%, it would still disappear as a pop. So we're going to do a little trick that I we use, not just me, but we used on our Need for Speed games that would kind of blow your mind, that the cars, the AI that were on the horizon were a little more than just cubes. So let's literally just take that to heart and make a cube and really just try to get it um, generally pretty close to the general shape of this car. Just, just an approximation. This is honestly like hand grenades and horseshoes. It really just needs to be sort of close but not perfect. We'll remove the box collider because we don't need collision on our art. We don't actually need it to cast or receive shadows. Basically, this cube is going to be the representation of like the car on the horizon in a game. And that means this thing's going to be drawing about two pixels tall in school screen resolution. So very unimportant, um, its detail or even its UV mapping. And in fact, we're going to go and put the car texture on it. So that way it just sort of matches the car color generally. White would really stand out too much. And what we're going to do is just grab this naming convention for our other models and we'll just call it LOD3 and we will drag it in the hierarchy and so now it's part of the hierarchy and there it is LOD3 so in our LOD group how you add a new LOD you just kind of expand this a little right click and we'll go insert um, before and what it did was is we want to hmm, we want to move this basically this needs to let me see about deleting this okay so let's go and select call insert before here we go and here's our LOD let me see LOD 3 that's where we want to be it's really really small it's way out there let's go in our LOD 3 and drag in that LOD 3 um, and let's call it out way out there, like at 1%. And let's transition it to the cube at about 4%. Okay, so let's see how this works. So there's our LOD2. There's our LOD3. Let's take a look about that at that transition. Ooh, that's too close. That's too close. I can kind of tell that that's a box. You see what's happening there? It's very visible. Um, I feel like at that distance would be the good distance right there. So we need to pop that LOD3 in much later. All right. I feel like we're going to be good there. So we can switch to the cube much further out. All right. That's perfect. I can't tell. I honestly, I can't tell that far out. It's, it's a blip. Comes in. It's a car. It's a car. So I think we're good. There's our high detail AI. There's a model that's a little bit half the triangles. A little bit, but not a little bit, half. There's one that's a third of it. And there's one that's literally um, ridiculous. That's four, four quads, eight triangles or something like that. And then you can still see it as a one pixel blip. And then it calls. That's actually perfect. And so one of the ways that you hide that, even if you, you're you not happy with that amount of disappearing, is just to use fog in the distance and then a, like a maybe a, a round sky dome geometry 
that it can kind of blend through and into with the fog and uh, you, you know you kind of want to do these kind of techniques on mobile for optimization so basically we would hit apply to include our other cube LOD here crazy technique but it works and it, it literally swaps through all these LOD levels and it gives you really great performance you could have 30 and 40 AI vehicles if on the dis in the distance or on the horizon they were 300 triangles like this or 200 and then they just become a cube I mean your, your game's frame rate and processing is going to be awesome um, you can also preview these LODs really nicely in the um, I'm going to turn this off and just go solid color you can preview these very nicely with just the camera the default camera in your game so what we can do is just look through the camera and watch these LODs kind of shift it's really hard to tell it's happening because these LODs are well done but there you go there you go there you go there it became a cube you can't tell it's literally two or one pixels tall on the screen and as it comes in it increases in detail and really if this were if these were AI vehicles you'd sort of be seeing it like this as it goes off into the distance 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 I think it's a cube at this point it's impossible to tell all right and this same um, technique works with everything it works with player characters with animations and rigs it works um, with buildings and this is the technique LODs are the technique that allow games like Assassin's Creed and uh, and the battlefield and battlefront it allows them to have these really beautiful models and the super high detail and then basically the things LOD, especially in Assassin's Creed all of the buildings and their techniques for their LODs are awesome um, and it makes the game's performance really good. Um, there is a fade mode here on your LOD group, and it can, you know, you can fade between LODs using uh, speed tree materials and speed tree, or you can just use a crossfade and animate. And what that'll do is, when you transition these um, LODs, the fade mode is it was intended to help um, reduce the popping because it does this like moray pattern fading, okay, and it's pretty awesome. Um, however, when you do do that, you need to, um, I'm going to go into the Unity documentation here and show you, um, rather than just describe it, um, you do have to include your own code right here for the blend factor. Um, it's right here. Um, you will need to implement your own technique according to your game site and asset production. You can choose fade mode. However, Unity will not do this built-in. That kind of stinks. You will need to impl implement this technique according to your own game type. It'll pass it to your shader. So you need to look this up. We could possibly do another tutorial on it, but you'll need to put this um, LOD fade percentage or crossfade into your shader for the shader to actually allow the blending between your LODs. But as you can see, if your LODs are done well, and I've done hundreds of thousands of LODs in my game um, career, if they're done well, you don't notice the popping, and you don't need to worry about fading. And these are this is with uber um, low poly stuff, so it's even easier to get away with it on super high poly stuff. So please um, like the video, subscribe if you're not a subscriber, and give me comments on the bottom. I check the comments, I read them, I respond to them, and I like to make tutorials based on what I hear people saying that they want to know or see. And again, I'm going to try to keep all these tutorials between 5 and 10 minutes, but no greater than 20 minutes. I talked a little long on this one, so it went a little longer. Hopefully you guys have a thorough understanding of LODs uh, in Unity using LOD groups to incorporate them that way. Don't forget to look down in the um, don't forget to look down in the um, uh, video description for um, this car model and everything because there's a really cool uh, mobile car paint shader in here that's pretty awesome um, where you can tweak all kinds of perimeters and uh, and things on the car um, and it's optimized for mobile to like use fake cube map um, reflections so grab that Unity package file and at least grab this model and use it look at the triangle counts and use it to benchmark um, 
polygon resolutions and texture resolutions in your mobile games. Um, until the next tutorial, thank you for watching and goodbye.